Hi, and welcome to the voice of Apache. My name is Rich Bowen. Right at the end of Cassandra Summit, at the end of 2023, I had a chance to speak with Mick Sem Weaver and uh, talk to him about a variety of topics around the Apache Cassandra project. Doing uh, one final interview at uh, Cassandra Summit in San Jose. The, uh, the event's just wrapping up and uh, been a lot of good content here. Um, tell us a, a, few, a few highlights of this event for you. Yeah, so, so yeah, it's, it's been a fantastic 2023 Cassandra Summit. We haven't had a Cassandra Summit in quite a few years now. Um, and it's been fantastic uh, on a personal note and for the project. Cassandra has had a rejuvenation uh, period. Uh, it went in kind of a quiet period from 2017 to 2019 and then from 2019 uh, as Datastacks came back into the open source community and re-engaged with the project and we saw most of our committers now elsewhere, uh, a lot of them at Apple. We had this slow journey of re-establishing a community. Um, let's not forget the ASF motto of community over code. Um, rebuilding trust um, and also kind of recreating a community where people's motivations or priorities were very different to the pre-2016-17 days. That journey has kind of felt like it's accumulated to this point in time where we're starting to see that community uh, go from kind of inward looking uh, building, forming, um, also on the tech side from the 4.0 to the 4.1 release to go, we're actually adding now features again, we're actually thinking about where this technology goes and the community itself is, is now looking outward. And we see that here now, um, it was a, probably a doubling, maybe a tripling of attendees around the Cassandra group from the ApacheCon in the New Orleans. Still small by conference standards, but the group here felt real and you certainly felt the potential for growth. Um, so we're excited about the next Cassandra Summit. We think we're in a fantastic place. This is a fantastic step forward. Did that answer the question, Rich? Yeah, I think so. Um, so Cassandra is one of those projects that is dependent on many other communities um, in many ways. Um, because it's it's used by other products and services. Tell us a little bit about your, your relationship with other Apache projects. So let me start with a personal anecdote on that one. Before Cassandra 2011, when I got involved, I had no interest in databases whatsoever. I went through university, I didn't touch databases, I didn't touch SQL, I thought it was boring. Maybe I'm being a bit <laughs> arrogant saying that. Um, I was more interested in scientific computing, uh, there was more challenging, engaging things out there. And then I had a, a, you know, after the mobile first, after the explosion of data and the, um, everything that user centric data and all that stuff, um, starting to build uh, apps that needed uh, distributed database and I looked at Cassandra and I was like, like, this is actually doing a database design the way, in a way that is obvious with everything else we're doing. We knew how to scale Tomcat sessions, we knew how to, like, like there, were, there were best practices in place already, um, and, but applying that to a database is no simple thing. And it's taken like a decade to actually kind of catch up with that, that monolith legacy RDMS system to a, a distributed database. And even uh, and, and it's taken us time to also realize that, that Cassandra itself will never entirely replace uh, in, on a microservice or distributed computing everything that the IDMS was. Um, it took some, it, it, the idea of externalizing replication, you know, Martin Kleppman's paper, doing the database inside out, that was a really important first step for us to think about how to distribute database but we've also come to the point now where we see we look at what how Apple builds data platforms how Netflix builds data platforms how uber builds data platforms 
you're really moving, it's really about building modern data platforms. Mm -hmm. And Cassandra won't replace Postgres. Cassandra will be a, in a, in a component in a modern data platform that replaces the RDMS. And in that modern data platform, you will have some streaming technology, you will have other indexing technology, and you will have an OLAP uh, technologies. Um, and so, and we're seeing that in data stacks too. We're pulling in more and more different technologies. We've been very active with Apache Pulsar. Mm -hmm. um, we've done some really interesting things there. We've had taken more components out of Cassandra and actually like our commit logs and put them into Apache Pulsar instead. And so, yes, there is, there is, we are very open-minded with whatever technology we use in the open source space. But that can't get us past the, some of the best technologies that are in the ASF. Yeah. Um, and so we, we don't have a bias towards the ASF, but you, you every, like everybody, you will be there. Because mm -hmm. um, it's where some very good stuff is. Let me ask about something completely different. Tell me a little bit about this new Catalyst program. So I'm very interested in what you're doing and why and what problems it's trying to solve. The disclaimer up front, this is not recognition on the access of the project official roles. You think about you know, what it means to be committer, what it means to be on the PMC, um, or, or to be a member in the ASF, there's a notion there of trust. Mm -hmm. You have reached a point in time, you've understood enough of the procedures, um, you've worked with people, people people you accepted into a community and there's a trust there and that's kind of a, it's, 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 it's once you cross that gate you're in basically the catalyst program is more point in time praise for extra effort and that extra effort could be anywhere it doesn't have to be engineering it doesn't even have to be anything that contributes to the project in an internal point of view and one of the, one of the ways that we exp uh, wanted to express this was that everybody in our community and ecosystem is an equal candidate for this including our committed and our PMC members okay and even within our PMC some of them were a bit like huh like, like, what do you mean? But I'm already in PNC. Why, why would I take this title or price? Yeah, I saw that discussion on the mailing list just today. Yeah. And, um, and, and for our first round, we didn't uh, take on any committers, PMC members. But that was simply because the, we felt there was a conflict of interest because for this year, as we bootstrap it, the only people voting were the committers in PMC. Oh, I see, okay. So we're like, let's just wait till next year when we've got a longer nomination period, more people to choose from, and the people voting uh, will be a broader range of people, so we don't feel like we're just patting ourselves on the back. Um, but at the same time, there was a misunderstanding, and, and, and I want to give the praise to John Haddad uh, uh, here, because uh, he, was, he was one of the people who said, well, why would I do this? And I was just like, John Haddad, you have just in the last... Uh, and this is this, this this year gone off and set up from scratch your own consulting company around mm -hmm. Cassandra. Now, the amount of effort and ability it takes to to start a commercial venture on a project is phenomenal mm -hmm. and contributes hugely to the success of the project. Yet it's not a requirement of a community of the PMC. And in fact, it's, it's recognition of something that we really don't want to pull in to the official roles either, because yeah. it's very commercial based. <clears throat> um, but at the same time, we can go, look, on a different axis, orthogonal to this, we actually recognize what you're doing is more than a nine to five job. It's more than ASF roles. You're going beyond and we want to say thank you. I've, I've been in the ASF for a while now, and it's, you, you know, as I, I couldn't be happier in an organization. I have learned so much over the years. I remember coming in tiles, fashion tiles, mm -hmm. taking over that project um, at its final days before moving to the attic. 
Um, and I remember there, kind of like, like, like one, one of the lessons I learned was, I was like, but this project is still entirely valid. Why is it moving to the, the attic? And um, I heard something interesting said this, and it helped formalize why we have the attic um, and what the ASF is about. Um, that some people believe that open source is uh, a one-way derivative of IP. And other people believe that open source is the commoditization of technology. And to do commoditization of technology, you need a community. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. understanding that an open source project isn't just reference work, isn't just a static point in time IP, it is a living body. Yeah. And that is why we have the addict because we need living bodies of work, we need the communities and the projects. Um, and so that's kind of, I think one of the wonderful things about the ASF is the community of code. You know, look after each other um, and, and, and work with each other to, to have fun. Um, we're supposed to have fun in life. Yeah. I'll leave it on that note. All right. <laughs> well, thank you cool. so much for your time and it was Thanks good to see you here. Yes, great okay. to see you here, Rich. Thank you.